My name is Bobby G, and I'm here to talk to you a little bit about serious autograph collecting in classic Hollywood. Now, I have a mild blip of an online presence on Instagram and YouTube under Bobby at Gloss, and all I've done so far is post a few cheesy videos about celebrity encounters, a couple workout videos, and um, posting a lot of autographs. But I thought I would dig in a little bit deeper here on YouTube and talk about um, the actual hobby and phenomenon of autograph collecting and classic Hollywood in particular, since the golden age of Hollywood is my sweet spot. So the first question that people ask is, why? Why do you collect autographs? They're people just like you and I. Isn't that idolatry? Yeah, what's up with that old guy? So um, what I have to do is make a point right now about what I think about autographs. I think that autographs are a perfect moment of pop culture captured, frozen in time. So when you see an exquisitely signed with beautiful handwriting like they used to back in the day when people actually had nice writing instead of scrawled across things, if you have a beautifully signed photograph of a classic Hollywood movie star in a legendary, iconic, renowned role, that to me is a work of art. Not to mention that it's an investment, right? If you have a picture of Vivian Lee signed uh, as Scarlett O'Hara in Gone with the Wind, woo! To that point, I never have and never will get an autograph from a celebrity for resale. The only autographs that I sell are autographs that I have purchased from other longtime collectors that I know are authentic um, and that I can I, I verify the authenticity behind. But I just want you to understand that um, I understand that there are people just like me. In actuality, it's not because, woo, I've met a celebrity because I've met a lot of celebrities. And let me tell you, uh, yeah, I like to have the piece of pop culture, the piece of art. So I'm not a stalker. I'm not a weirdo. I'm just a lover of classic Hollywood um, and a freak for pop culture, okay? So when did you start collecting? Uh, so I started collecting, I think, when I was in eighth grade, and my redheaded friend Ray Savage comes to class, I think it was science class, actually, and everybody's, like, paying attention to him in the corner as they're looking through his binder. I was like, what? What, what is so interesting about his homework? Um, but no. What it was was that he had pictures of... Uh, 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 Elvis Presley, John Wayne, Lucille Ball, uh, Elizabeth Taylor, Mary Pickford. I didn't even know who Mary Pickford was at the time. I was like, what? You're writing to these celebrities and they're writing back to you? I need to get into that hobby. And so I did. I actually went out and purchased, believe it or not, old school maps to the celebrity homes. These, these are legit. And these are the ones that I actually used way back in the day to write to celebrities, right? So... That's how I started collecting. I started writing to them through the mail. So my very first 10 successes were Mel Blanc, the voice of Bugs Bunny, Daffy Duck, etc. For the free. Just sent him a letter and he would send you a picture. For free, right? Pat Boone. I didn't know him except uh, for the fact that I think he had like an acne commercial on the air at the time and my mom had some of his 45s. Kirk Douglas. Now, this is a preprint or a auto pen, but we'll talk about that later. I didn't even know his legendary status. I just wrote to him because I liked him in Saturn, that movie Saturn 3 or whatever with Farrah Fawcett because I loved her. Um, Ernest Borgnine, forgot to put the Y on Bobby, but Academy Award winner for um, Marty. Of course, I loved him from The Poseidon Adventure. And I was amazed when I wrote to the Ravenswood Apartments and got an answer back from Mae West, who signed everything that I sent her. In the beginning, signs of commercialism, she sent me a price list of how I could buy other autographs from her for certain prices. Um, also, I loved Charlton Heston in Soylent Green and in Planet of the Apes. And <laughs> she was so sweet. Um, I had never seen a silent movie, but I liked the pictures of her, so I wrote to Lillian Gish. And I didn't know better. I sent her like 25 pictures, and she signed all of them. How nice, right? And how lucky was I within my first 10 to get Fred Astaire, right? Look at that. Those are awesome. Also... Yes, I do have Ginger Rogers. Mr. Rock Hudson was also in my first 10. Look at this picture of him and Elizabeth Taylor from Giant. Nice, right? But when I got this one, I was a big fan of Hush Hush Sweet Charlotte and whatever happened to Baby Jane, which you couldn't see on demand back in the day. You had to wait till it was on the scary feature, creature features. Um, Betty Davis, when she wrote back to me, and I communicated with her many times over the years, when she wrote back to me, even my dad said, well, what is she doing writing back to you? But 
C'est la vie. I was very lucky. Since then, um, I've built my collection to well over 10,000 autographs from writing to celebrities, from meeting them at book signings, at concerts, at stage doors, um, airports, walking on the street, even at a garage sale. That's a great story. Um, plus, I've purchased collections from old school collectors, even older than me, who have great big collections that they want to get rid of because they're retiring or because they want to collect gold coins or something. Um, plus, people have given me gifts. Or I have found them in uh, bookstores or in thrift shops. Of course, I've checked the veracity or the authenticity, but I'm very lucky. So I have over 10,000 autographs. So Bobby, where do you store these? Um, well, I have some on my shelves and walls, but only in one room because you don't want to do an overload. Actually, two rooms. Um, but downstairs, I have a Fire King fireproof legal filing cabinet that's filled with like 100 binders, right? And it starts with AA, uh, Beverly Adlin who was, whoops, sorry for the glare there, she was the 17-year-old girlfriend of 50-year-old Errol Flynn and was with him at the time that he died. Hmm, imagine that. Um, also, Kirk Allen. So this book is AA to AL. Wow, sorry for the glare. AA to AL, and uh, he was TV Superman. And now my collection in the binder situation ends with W.O. Elijah Wood through... Oh yeah, forgive me. Oh, there was that from Zimbalist. Forgive me if I don't get the pronunciation right, but from Melrose Place, Daphne Zuniga. So, I've got a lot of stories from A to Z about these celebrities. Um, so, what I plan to do is tell you a little bit about, like, um, Madonna. <laughs> I've got good Madonna stories. Joan Crawford, Silent Stars, How to Write a Good Fan Letter, How to Detect a Forgery, um, who, which one is my favorite autograph? Um, uh, stars of Tennessee Williams and Alfred Hitchcock films. Um, Elizabeth Taylor. Um, I've even got politicians and adult stars. Not that they have anything to do with each other. Um, uh, old school, man. Uh, I am old school. So keep in mind that all of my content is for mature audiences only. And by that, I mean you have to be of a certain age to know who the hell I'm talking about or a lover of classic Hollywood. So um, that doesn't mean I don't have Janet and Miley and Taylor and Gaga. I do, but my sweet spot is the golden age of Hollywood. So if you have a particular celebrity or somebody that you want me to talk about, let me know. Um, until then, happy collecting. This is Bobby G, Bobby at Gloss. And uh, who's your favorite classic Hollywood movie star? Hmm.